get ready for Smoke Night Live with Massa Sensei. Here we are, ladies and gentlemen. This is a Smoke Night Live, episode 237, Jordan? 237? At least. At least. 237. Yes. And um, so hopefully we can uh, hopefully we can get this thing rocking and rolling tonight. Uh, I don't know if it's because everybody's on the internet now. They're all quarantined at home. We've been having internet troubles lately, but uh, we're going to do our best to bring you the show tonight. we got a special guest online. None other than one of our favorite guests of all time, Eric Espinoza. Eric Espinoza, how are you doing, my friend? I'm I'm doing great. I mean, you know, physically great, but uh, you know, it's a tough time out there, you know. Yeah, um, right. Yeah, what are we gonna do? You know, are I'm you... in quarantine. <laughs> what's uh, what's quarantine like at the Espinoza house? I want to kill my wife. I want to <laughs> kill my dog. <laughs> I already seen Rocky Thirty Seven. You know, I'm just, <laughs> I seen every Godfather uh, a movie, dude. I even seen uh, Fast and the Furious. What ninety two already, dude? I'm done. Get me out of this. You're saying that you've <laughs> you've completely watched Netflix, like from start to finish, uh, uh, dude. Whoever came up with that, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, this, um. Uh, Animal, no, Tiger King or whatever it's called. Oh, right. Wow, that was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> that was disturbing. No spoilers. All right, I'm in the fifth episode. That, that was disturbing. No, I stopped in, in, in the second one. Uh, I refused to watch it. It seems to it's, be. Well, it's like a train wreck. You just got to. Like, that's all anybody's talking Everyone about. Everyone says it's a train wreck, dude. I mean, why is a train wreck fun? <laughs> Hey, uh, uh, quick quick note before we get wrapping here with Eric. Uh, guys, Bonsai's back for sale at PaylessCigarsAndPipes.com. So if you want to get your hands on some Bonsai, you got to do it now. And also, hey, you know, with this quarantine thing going on, we've been doing the virtual lounge. And uh, if, you, if you're in your Dojo app, you just go to the menu item. There's a virtual lounge menu item. Just click on it, and it'll give you the address. Everybody's been hanging out. Eric's been in there. Juan Cancel. I seen Terrence Riley in there. I mean, there's been all kind. Of, Matt Booth was he popped in the other day. Everybody's been popping in the virtual lounge. Eric, uh, you've been having some fun in there yourself, man. Hanging out with us. Yeah, I mean, listen, it's not like there's much to do, you know. So, you know, but you got some great guys in there. You know, some great conversation. You know. Except for yesterday. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> I mean, I mean um, no, it, it's good. It's good to see the people that, you know, even though, it, it, you know, it's with a camera, but it, it's good to to interact with these guys and, and girls. And, and, and it, actually, you know, the truth is, uh, Eric, it gives you something to do, man. You yeah. know, it's great. I, I mean, I don't know who came up with this, but it, it's, it's, it's great. It gives you, you know, you can kill two hours, you know. Uh, yeah, I mean, I really, now we're all looking yeah. for stuff to do at this point, right? I mean, it, it, there is. I mean, there's not much to do. Even though I go to the warehouse, uh, you know, it's only Eric and I. You know, we go to the warehouse and ship some orders. Not that there's a lot. There's a lot of stores that are closed, but you know, um, after that, you know, I come home. I'm home like around four thirty, five o'clock, and and um, you know, I'm never, I'm never home, and it's just like you know, it's crazy. You know, there's not much to do. So, Eric, you know, for me. As this was going along, you know, and I was starting to hear rumblings and everything, the the moment that the NBA canceled their season, I at that that was the moment for me where I said, "Uh oh, this this is going to be severe." Uh, talk me through your last few weeks. Like, uh, how's it how's it been for you? When did you realize, wow, this could be more than just you know something quick? Like this this is serious. I mean, look, you know, when, when I first heard about it. You know, look, I, I'm not a guy. I, I don't watch the news. I, I can care less. I, I don't believe anything that they say. I really don't, you know. Um, you know, um, Republicans say one thing, Democrats say another. I, I don't watch it, I, you know. I, I, I don't. But, you know, my mother gave me a call, and then I started getting into it a little bit and, and reading things and uh, and listening to things. 
you know, um, I'm not that guy that wears a mask and wear gloves and all that. I can't do that. You know, yes, you want to protect yourself and all that. But I, I, I made up my mind. I said, look, I'm going to go to the warehouse. You know, uh, I'll go to the grocery store and buy things. I'll go early um, when there's nobody there. Um, get the th- essential things that I need. You know, but uh, again, I, I, I can't see myself wearing gloves uh, unless they're boxing gloves. But I can't wear gloves. I can't wear a mask. I can't breathe in those things. You know what I'm saying? I'm either going to die of suffocation or, <laughs> or you know, I, I just can't. I'm not that guy. Um, and, um, you know, listen, it's serious. OK, you know, I, I don't know anybody that has it and I don't know anybody that knows anybody that has it. OK, so everybody I talk to, um, you know. Apparently it's real, you know, that's what everyone tells you, but I have yet to know anybody that knows anybody that, that has it. But, um, you know, you better be safe than sorry. Like, I don't go to my parents' house. I do, I just drop off food, you know, because they're older and I, I don't want them because I deal with people. I don't want, you know, nothing to happen to them, you know, um, if they get it or whatever, they, they, you know, it, it's not going to be a pretty sight. So I just leave food outside for them or whatever, anything that they need. You know, I have another brother. I have a brother and three sisters and, you know, we take turns and all that. Um, but I don't think they're telling us everything, you know. Um, if, if why didn't they shut down the country? They should have shut down the country, you know, um, three, four, a couple weeks ago, you know, and 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 get this over with. And uh, you know, if no one's out there, then no one can get it. I mean, everyone stays inside. Uh, you know, we can um, hopefully, you know, they come up with something new, you know, a medicine or a vaccine or something. That, uh, you know, but it, it's scary though. If you hear the news, yeah. then then. then then it's scary. But if you don't, then you're fine. Yeah, Eric. That's I don't, the way I look at I, it. I, I'm worried about just the way people in society are now acting towards one another. I, w- I went to the grocery store before I came to the studio. And I'm standing there. I have two cases of Topo Chico, one on each shoulder, right? And I'm standing in line. Yeah. And they're kind of, you know, I mean, they're not super heavy, but they're heavy enough that I want to put them on the belt. Uh, I want to put them on the belt. You know, in the, the counter, yeah. On the, the counter, belt, yeah. So I asked the guy in front of me, I was like, hey, do you mind like, you know, like walking forward a little bit so I can set these on the counter? And, you know, he kind of scooches up and I put him on the counter and he turns to me and he's like, like mad at me. And he's like, he's like, dude, you, you are not six feet from me right now. And I'm like, I'm like, all right. And so I, like, I take a couple steps back, you know, and I'm like, he's like, I'm, I'm, I said to him, like, am I cool now? Are we good? Are we good now? You know? <laughs> And, it's, and you know, it's that's, like, a di- that's the difference between you and me. I would have hit him in the head with a topo chico. <laughs> I felt like I mean, it was like, come on, dude. I mean, I, I, I mean, and, 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 yeah. you know, look, bro. Uh, again, um, you know, they say that 40, 50, 60 percent of the whole country is going to get this. Um, I, I definitely don't want to get it. And I don't want any of my friends or anybody I know to get it. But I'm not going to stop living my life. I'm not. You know, I'm going to take precautions, but I, I'm not going to stop li- living my life because um, I, I fall forward. I'm not that type of guy that falls backwards, uh, you know. Um, imagine if, if I have to live like this in quarantine the rest of my life, well, I'd rather not live. Bro. I'll be honest with you. I'd rather not live, you know. Tell God, hey, take me because, dude, I am so bored out of my mind, you have no <laughs> idea, you know. <laughs> this ain't life, bro. It's the truth. I, I mean, you know, I know there's a lot of people out there in the world that has it uh, a lot tougher than we do, but um, it, it's 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 not life, man. Really not. You know, a lot of not uh, for me at least. A lot, all the cigar factories in Honduras closed, and I think most of them in the DR closed. And I heard today that a lot in Nicaragua are are starting to close. Ha, has this affected your factory, La Zona, in in Esteli? <laughs> Sure. I mean, look, you know, we have that elite program, you know, uh, Hector was going down there to do some nice stuff to send out to elite members and all that. And, and he had to cancel his trip, uh, you know, and, and, and that takes a while to do, you know, um, I mean, we're going to get everybody, everything that we promised them is just going to take a little bit longer. Um, you know, it's affected everybody. Um, you know, if you can't get, go down there, then you can't get things done. You know, because, uh, you know, Hector does the blending and all that, and uh, we have a lot of stuff that we, we need to take care of. We have a lot of things in the works, and we just can't get it done. And it's going to take a, it's going to take a lot longer, um, you know, from now on. And uh, just closing it, 
uh, it, it closes down a week, it puts us back two, three, four. Look, Hector not being able to go is going to put us back a couple right, months. Right. Uh, um, not just time he, he he wasn't able to go because it's a process, you know. Um, we can't even make the uh, uh, like the boxes because we didn't make the cigars and we don't know which cigars are good, what size. So the box guy can't make the boxes, um, you know. And and it's it, it's kind of messed up. It, it's gonna put us back for you know I don't know a couple months. It's like a chain reaction, right? Like it one, is. one it thing is. causes something else, which causes something else, and so forth. So is the factory still open to this point? Or? Yeah, it was open. Uh, I think today is going to be the last day. You know, I, I gotta we gotta figure it out because you know, look in Nicaragua, the truth is, look, it, it's they're not going to tell you what's going on. Um, you know, none of these communist countries tell you what's going on. Uh, um, you know, they they're, they're going to tell people uh, what they want to hear. Uh, you know, um, so, uh, you know, look, I got a lot of friends out there and, and I don't want to see anybody get hurt or get sick. Um, so we don't know how bad it is down there. Um, if it is bad, because they're not going to tell you, they're not going to give you the, uh, right. the right information. Yeah. That's the thing. Like, uh, the, the, it seems like the countries that are in the warmer, uh, climates are less affected to this point, which could be a good sign for all of us. As summer, other than Florida, other than Florida, because yes, you got, I, a, lot of, was told, you got a lot of old people in Florida too. So. Well, that's true too. What I was told is that um, you know the sun is what kills it. You know, yeah. so let me ask you a question, Eric. I got a couple questions here for you. All right, let's do it. And, right. you, and your opinion. I know this is just an opinion. I know you're not a doctor, and you're not this, no, and you're not I'm that. Not. But um, but I'm dang smart. Ooh. Yeah, you stayed at a Holiday Inn Express <laughs> one time. Uh, that was like I think back in '74, uh, right? Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, what do you think about the situation? When do you think it's going to end? You know, your opinion. I know it's not. You know, it's just an opinion. I I would say that, okay. That my gut instinct tells me just what I've been. What I think is that a lot more people have already had this and and got and got better than we realize like i think this was probably around for a lot longer and the reason that we're seeing these huge spikes is that we're now we're just testing for it you know and yeah. so my gut tells me that the numbers are still going to skyrocket as we test people right but ultimately like the the thing that matters the most is you know people that you know will the people that get really badly sick or die from it, it will that curve go down i think in the next you know month or so you will see that curves start to go down because i believe that a lot of us maybe even myself that from tpe i was sick as a dog when i came back from tpe in vegas and i thought i, I had, heard a lot of people i heard a yeah. lot of people got sick yeah i had i thought i had something horrible I, at the time i i didn't know what it was but maybe it was it i mean i just don't know and, and so a lot, a lot of the studies now that i'm reading are saying that maybe we underestimated the amount of people that have already had it and recovered and so i'm hoping that that's the case so I don't know, but because, you know, like you said, you read such varying reports. You know, you, you read this guy, he sounds like he's doom and gloom. And then you read the next guy and he's also a doctor and he makes it seem like, well, maybe we're, you know, maybe we're coming out of this. I really don't know. But my gut tells me that we're going to probably come out of this in the next month or so. But the problem is, will will the population and the governments and stuff, you know, acknowledge that or are they going to be too scared and continue to you know kind of keep us down that's the sort of scary part of it um, it's like a movie it really is man it's a, it, it's uh you know but listen i think enough of that man i mean uh, let's have a good time at the show i mean everybody hears this all day 24 hours a day but for this hour you know i just wanted your opinion on that and if you don't mind let's 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 have fun all right so but before we do i've got a question for you Okay. Based sort of on the same topic. So before we get out of this. Topic okay. Okay. Much, go ahead. Shoot. All right. So I have a, a two part question for you, Eric. Your, all right. Is your top three. All right. Top three. Your, the first one is what would be your top three guys in the cigar industry? Not your family, but your top three guys in the cigar industry that you wouldn't mind getting quarantined with. And then the second part of the question is, what would be your top three guys that you would be just be absolutely miserable being quarantined with? All right. Uh, um, can I answer the second part first? Yes. <laughs> sure. Uh, I, the guys I would not want to be with is 
Juan Cancel, <laughs> Abe DeBabna, and Steve Saka. Because they, they're going to eat all the food, okay? And there's, there's going to be none left for me, okay? <laughs> Is that fair enough? Oh, that's, yeah. I, I had a feeling that Juan was going to be on that list, but I didn't, I didn't uh, Dude, suspect the other one. Quarantine ones. will. There's somebody. It's got to be somebody that plays cards and shit. I, I wouldn't mind with Nemish. Nemish plays cards. Yeah. You know? Um, and we'll play poker, you know? So I, I guess uh, I'll get Nemish. Uh, who else? Because th- that's what I enjoy doing. I enjoy uh, playing cards and stuff. So it would have to be, you know, Matt Booth is a fun guy. Yeah, yeah. You know? Um, you know, he, he I, I guess I'll, I'll get mad. And, I mean, let's see who else, man. I mean, wow. can't be family. It can't be anything. Um Who's got good survival skills? No, who's a good chef? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> who's a good chef? I mean, maybe Carney. Uh, you know, John Carney. Um, man, he makes some good meat. That guy. Does he? Oh yeah, yeah. Um, Dude's a beast. I mean, Carney's a great guy. I mean, I, I don't have a relationship with him. I, I know the guy, but but I mean, we don't interact much. I mean, we don't see each other much. Um, you know. Um, um, He's a good cook. Uh, wow, that's 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 I, I that's a tough question, man. I'm trying to go through through all the companies and stuff like that. Um, you know, I don't know. I don't know the third person uh, will be. I mean, I'll tell you in a little bit. Let me think about that. I I probably pick. Uh, I think I'd probably get along well with Terrence Riley. Plus, he could reach. You know, on the top shelf. Yeah, to yeah. Get stuff. He, he's got those claws. Yeah, you know, which would be good. And yeah. and Coop, because I think Coop has already had it so i guarantee you that <laughs> i guarantee i wouldn't get sick you'll be you. fine yeah. you'll be fine <laughs> and then uh I, who i don't know who the third one would be i have to think about that but yeah the third one's kind of tough you know the third the third stuff but you know my my daughter asked me the other day she's like dad who who would you pick in the world like a a, t- a tv star if you if you had to you know use actual survival skills and I had to think about that one for a while. I mean, Bear Grylls, obviously, that'd be great. But uh, I don't think there's any guys in the cigar business that have great survival skills. I'm just gonna throw that out there. I don't. I don't think. I can't imagine like Jack Tarano on a desert island. You know, like, you know, yeah. getting coconuts and like, uh, you know, slaying a <laughs> boar or anything. Hey, um, I don't mean to cut you off, but uh, I got Hector texting me. He said he can't find the show. Uh, can you? Uh... Tell everybody, um, I mean, I don't know if uh, Jordan can do it. Or yeah, whatever, facebook.com but. forward slash Cigar Dojo. So, okay. If, there's, if, if I, there's almost 100 uh, people on, so it's got to be. Really? Hard. Yeah. So. Let, let, let me just text him if you don't mind. <laughs> you All have right. one guy that doesn't know how to use Facebook. Come on, Hector. Derails Come the on. Operation. That's definitely why I don't want Hector hey, on a desert island. Hey, okay. hey, Hector's a tech guy, too. Although, maybe Hector on a desert island could be good because, you know, if we if we got the cannibalism, you know. Could eat. We could. We could eat on one of Hector's thighs for L- a day listen, or two Hector, at least. I know you said in, you didn't say family. You know, Hector's like if he was my family, but he works with us. But Hector's like the uh, one of the smartest guys I've ever met in my life. You Is know? he like and a MacGyver he, kind of guy? Dude, I don't know if he's a MacGyver, but look, you know, if I have to be quarantined with Hector, you know, I I learned so many big words I've never heard before. You know, <laughs> he comes up with these words, you know, that I have no idea what it is. and I always got to tell him, listen. Talk to me like I'm a three-year-old. Remember the movie, um, what was it, uh, Philadelphia with Denzel Washington? He tells him, uh, talk to me like I'm a three-year-old. I, I tell that to Hector all the time. He comes <laughs> up with these words. I have no idea, <laughs> you know, what they mean. I said, Hector, speak speak to me in English, buddy. He's you an know, I got no idea what you What's that? He's an intellectual, I guess, right? He is. You know, he is. Oh. <laughs> but all right. Are we done with this? Yeah, we're done with it. All right. Let's have some fun. All right. Let's Are you ready? It. I got a couple questions for you. Okay. I'm ready. All right, other than the dojo and all that, okay, what else would you rather be doing if it ain't cigars? Ooh. Um oh Hector just Hector just uh he, he's on. He's on. He came he came back at me. Sensei thinks he can take me. Hector, I don't know if I could take you, but while you're sleeping, I could I could suffocate you with a pillow. Boom. <laughs> I guarantee it, because I've seen Hector sleep right in the middle of IPCPR. I guarantee he would not wake up. Uh, all right. Uh, let's see. What would I rather be doing? Um, yeah. I suppose, um, you know, I'd probably be into uh, car racing. I'd probably own a. Uh, I'd probably own my own team. 
and uh, go 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 car racing. I, I I wouldn't drive. I'm too old for that. But you know, I wouldn't mind being a part of how a. Can, uh, how, how can you be too old to drive? See, look, I, I'm not a NASCAR guy. I, those things I don't understand. Look, I hit a golf ball. I'm 53 years old. I hit a golf ball further now than I ever did in my life. Okay. I can hit the ball 300 some yards. I don't care who, who out there don't believe me. I'll bet them anything they want. Okay. <laughs> uh, how is it that if you're 50, you can't drive a car at the same speed? I mean, your reflex. That's, I mean, I don't know. The yeah. It's the it's the reflex. It's the reflex. It's, it's the, those young. Really? Kids. You know, because I've been involved in racing for I don't know. Right, right, 40, right. I, I don't 40 argue. years. I just don't know. Right. Okay. And so typically, what happens is. You know, the, the best guys are in that, you know, 20 to 30 year old range because their reflexes are okay. so they, they can go just as fast. I mean, they can push the throttle just as hard. Right. It's just the reflex. It's all that little teeny minute, you know, s- details and your vision and all of that kind of stuff starts to go away. Now, don't get me wrong. I feel like I'd be I'd be friggin phenomenal. But the truth of it is I probably I'm too old. Prob- probably. So. So that's what about you, Eric? Well, if you were in cigars, what would you be doing? Uh, be doing? Baseball. Anything has to do with baseball. I I I wanted to be a, a a baseball player, but I was never that good. You know, I have a lot of connections in baseball. I mean, one of the biggest uh, uh, scouts for uh, the uh, he used to be with the Braves in the Phillies, and I told him, look, if you know. If I ever, you know, get out of this business, you know, I told him I, I go work for free. You know, I was a real big, big baseball guy. You know, oh, yeah. um, I know you, you're like a really good softball player. People say, yeah, you know, uh, I still play softball at 53. Yeah. I'm better now than I ever been. Thank God for Aleves. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> Without the Aleves, I can't do it. But um, you know, I, I work out now. I, I growing up, I, I never worked out, and you know, I'm, I'm into working out, lifting weights. Um, you know, I'm stronger now than I've ever been. Um, yeah, I, I did three plates the other day, bench uh, bench press. I mean, I don't care if nobody out there believes me, but whatever. But, um, you know, baseball for me was the greatest sport, uh, even though I enjoy watching football a lot better. But, uh, you know, the ins and outs of baseball, you know, um, you know, just uh, studying the pitcher, what's his next pitch going to be? All that I, I used to love it. it, it it's kind of boring, you know, nowadays. Uh, but back in the eighties, nineties, I just flat out loved it. I, I couldn't wait for uh, you know before cable and all that. You know, uh, this week in baseball, I don't know if you know Mel Allen is, but I mean they they used to have this program before um, ESPN. It was all it was only one game on Saturday, and you know I couldn't wait to to see it. That, that's what I would love to. Do. You know, Eric, you, know, you wouldn't do. you wouldn't do a professional karaoke? Oh yeah, that would yeah, you'd be good at that for sure. Uh, look, I know the words to a lot of songs. How many times could I he can... do four non blondes? I mean, yeah, was... really. No, I switched it up last, no, year, last Oasis year, now. You, you got six, but I, yeah, yeah, you got one. I did. Um, no, I did. Uh, no, I did. Uh, Pink Floyd. Uh, Wish you were here. Uh, you also do Allentown by uh, Billy Joel. Uh, Allentown, yeah. yeah. You do that good. I go to Allentown a lot, and every time I go to Allentown, I gotta sing that song. <laughs> <You know? laughs> hey, um, that 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 baseball thing, Eric. Just real quick, why is it that it's legal for every baseball stadium to be different? It seems bizarre to me that every baseball stadium is unique. And that's what, and that's what's unfair about the game of baseball. Um, why do you play? Look, you guys are from Colorado. I play softball in Colorado. You just a check swing and you can hit a home run. You know the, the air is so thin out there. Um, that's what's unfair. Um, you know, you know. Ever since that steroid era, um, mm. uh, you know that 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 kind of messed it up for me. Not that I was I'm against the steroids because um, it wasn't illegal at the time. What what I can't stand is that you know no owner was held accountable. You know. I've said this time and time again. You know, Tony La Russa, I don't know if you know, I don't know if you're a baseball guy. You know, uh, he's in the Hall of Fame. You know, he's a manager. But, you know, Jose Canseco and, and uh, McGuire, uh, Mark McGuire gave him a lot of wins, you know. And, and why is he in the Hall of Fame? You know, he got a lot of wins from guys who, who took steroids. You know, Good point. why is it okay for him to make it to the Hall of Fame? Yeah, I guess where do you draw it, that line, right? It, where do you draw that line? That is that, that is correct. You know, it ain't what it used to be. Um the owners knew they were taking steroids, but it was it was saving the game at the time because uh, it was uh, they came off the strike year um, and they wanted more homers. What do homers do? 
Eric, it puts people in the seats. Okay, that's what they want. It's okay for them to change the ball. It's okay for them to change the bats. Okay, it's okay for them to bring the fences in. That's okay. That's altering the game. You know, that's altering the game. And um, but it's okay when the owner, you know, look, P. Rose is banned from baseball. I'm a huge P. Rose fan. Okay, he was banned uh, uh, from baseball. Okay, right. for gambling on the sport. Now, I got an issue if he bet it against his team while he was managing. But you can't bet on on baseball. But the number one sponsor for the Florida Marlins is a casino. Hmm. You know how much money the casino brings in in sponsorship to the Florida Marlins? But you can't bet on the game. But it's okay for the owners to get that sponsorship. You know, that makes no sense to me. Eric, I think here's what they should do. This would solve the gambling problem. It It should be legal for any player or any manager to bet on baseball as long as they're betting on themselves to win. Sure. Huh? Sure. I, I just solved you it, Jordan. It. I just fixed it, and I just that just <laughs> came to me. That just Absolutely. came to me right then. Absolutely. If you believe in yourself, then you're going to win. How about this, you know? Eric? What do you think about the whole Houston Astro, Astros uh, scandal? Do you think that they should take away the World Series? Listen, from them I, I know Terrence Riley is on. It's no different than what the Patriots have been doing. <laughs> Ooh. It's no different. I, Listen, Terrence Riley ain't old enough to know this, it but seems a the little Patri- different. Why is it different when I mean, you get information? Listen, you're, they're getting information. Yeah, you know it's information. Look, we- we're, um, wearing like a, a transmitter on your chest just seems I don't know. Like, that's... listen, Eric, listen, Terrence Riley don't know this because he's too young to know this. <laughs> I don't know what uh, at what decade it could have been the early eighties. The Patriots got a guy. The guy just got released from jail on a Saturday. Okay, he was doing. Uh, you know, we're not from the. Uh, from the north, we don't get snow here. What uh, the snowplow game they called it? Okay, I remember the game. It was uh, zero zero. Dolphins and the Patriots going on. It was like in the fourth quarter. I remember uh, that game. Four or five, six minutes left into the game. Right. The guy comes to clean the the, the yard line. He's supposed to clean the every ten yards. Okay. What does he do? He makes a quick right, cleans off where the <laughs> Patriot kicker is gonna kick, and they kick the field goal. Okay, I mean, that's not cheating. I would have made them go kick in the other end zone, you know, Um, you know, the the the, the, uh, football, the what is it called? The flag game? What is it called? The. uh, The uh, Yeah, when when, when they had the. uh, Oh, deflate, deflate. Well, yeah, yeah. No different. I I mean, you know, people have been cheating in baseball. is it wrong? Absolutely, it's wrong. Do you think, though, that you they know. kind of push the boundary of that, though, a little far there? Sure. I think they should take away the World Series. Oh, from them. wow. Okay. There you go. Yeah. Look at the, uh, what was the pitcher's name for, uh, he used to pitch with Texas and he, and he, and then he pitched with the Dodgers. They got traded in the middle of the year. Uh, the uh, Asian guy, the, um, Hugh Darvish, or whatever his name is. He got lit up. He never got out of the first inning in any game. They lit him up, you know? Um, I would take the World Series away. Wow. You know, it's cheating. So should should they get banned? Should they ban all the players? I guess the, the the problem would be is like then you'd have to figure out okay the team that you know would have got it did they also cheat? You'd have to like go back and like where do you uh, here we go back again to where do you draw the line as to you know where the cheating stopped because there's a lot of teams that were probably doing similar stuff. I don't know. Look, I, I I don't know, but it's a huge advantage if you know there's a curveball coming. Because playing baseball all my life, um, they tell you, uh, uh, you know, you, you think fastball and you react to a curve, okay? But if you know that curveball's coming, you know, it's a huge, huge advantage, you know? If you know the fastball's coming, it's a huge advantage. It makes right, you right, yeah. a, a way better hitter, you yeah, know? No doubt. Hey, you got you got, you got some yeah. other questions for me, right? Yes. Wait, before you do, I'm going to do our commercial real quick. Because this show is sponsored by JR Cigars, one of the world's largest online cigar stores. JR's inventory ranges from everyday bundled cigars to incredibly high-end boxes, including the brand new exclusive Cabanas, crafted by the legendary Don Pepin Garcia. Don't forget to check out their social media pages, including YouTube, where they feature cigar reviews, interviews, and their famous weekly top five videos. Check out JR Cigars for all of your premium cigar needs. And there you go. 
right. That's nicely done. So welcome back to Smoke Night Hello. Live, everybody. This is episode 237. I'm here with Eric Espinosa and, of course, our intrepid producer, Jordan, the Wonder Boy. Hello, Jordan. How are yeah. you tonight? Uh, I'm decent. Jordan, what are you smoking? Uh, Warzone. Warzone. That's what I'm My smoking. Man. No, no. So I'm nice. smoking. There we go. Right there, baby. So, all right. So I have a couple questions. I, yeah, I'm ready. A couple things are going to come out of this uh, quarantine thing, okay? Let me tell you the good news. The good news is that people are going to continue washing their hands. Okay, that's true. That's true. And my son's home a lot. Yeah. Okay. And I want to be a granddaddy. <laughs> Not that I am, but I want to ask you that question. Ah. Uh, what brings you, uh, and I don't care if Jordan's there, what brings you more joy? And don't say it's a different kind of love, because that's what everybody tells you. What brings you more joy? I'm not a grandfather. Yet. Your son, your your kids, or your grandkids? Ooh. Well, ultimately, don't worry about Jordan's there. I know, I know. It's <laughs> tough because one one thing that I love about the grandkids is seeing you get, you give them back. Well, yeah, I mean, there's that, but no, like honestly, like I love seeing, you know, Jordan and my daughter Mackenzie go through and get to experience the fun stuff that I got to experience with them. So in a way, it's it's probably better with the grandkids because not only am I getting to enjoy them, but I'm also getting to enjoy my kids, you know, enjoying them. And that's that's really cool to see them go through, you know, all the stages. Oh, they learned to walk or whatever, you know, and that kind of stuff. So it's like it's like a magnitude of two, right? Like you're getting double the double the excitement of of the of the raising of the child, which is really cool. Nice done. All right, if you could switch place with anybody in the world, right? Who would that be? Forget about kids. Forget about your kids, right, your, right, right, your right, grandkids, right, right, all that. Right, right. You can have somebody's job, or, or, or you you can be somebody else. Who would Ooh. that person be? Wow, that's that is a tough. That's a tough question, man. Probably. Juan Cancel don't come to mind. No, <laughs> no, not not that I don't love Juan. But I want to remember what I'm doing, you know. I want to be able yeah, to, yeah. To, <laughs> to remember the next day. It's just then... seltzer. It's just seltzer. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> it would probably have to be somebody that lived in a uh, tropical location, and maybe was in the cigar world because I I love that. How about I'm just gonna throw one out. I, you're putting me on the spot, so I'm gonna I'm gonna throw one out. I will switch places with uh Klaus Kellner. I get to be hanging out on Ooh. the uh in the DR dealing with tobacco all day long. I mean, he's young. That means I get an extra 30 years. So, um, I'm going to go with Klaus. Yeah, what the heck? What about you, Eric? Well, who would you it, switch it, with? It, it, is that um is that um uh Henke Kellner's son or yeah, I, I right. don't know who he is. Yeah, that's, is that yeah, who he is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. He's you know, hey, lives in a beautiful place, gets to you know, bounce around the DR. Really? Or... Anybody in the world? That's what you I don't like know. You put me on the spot, Eric. You gotta, you gotta get me, cut me some slack. Well, how about you? Me, me. Hold on. Let me make sure this door's locked before I. <laughs> <laughs> My wife's in the bedroom. Dude, I would say Hugh Hefner. I know oh. he's no longer with us, but I would. <laughs> Are you kidding uh, me, bro? Uh, that's yeah. I mean... <laughs> Hugh Hefner, bro. <laughs> Dude, having having one wife is is tricky. I mean, you know, are you sure that, you wanna? Are you sure you wanna? That was that was the man, bro. That was the man, dude. Isn't it you know, weird living in the, play, in the Playboy Mansion? Eric, uh. Eric, isn't it weird how how times change? Because in like 1975 or so, you know, that was thought of as like you know the ultimate you know guy thing to be, but but that's gone nowadays. Like that's like you, that can't even be a, a thing these days in this climate that we're in right why not i mean <laughs> i'm just you saying know. <laughs> yeah dude I, I mean listen i don't take that i i can care less who's who i don't have a problem with what anybody what anybody does but just leave me the hell alone that's the way i look at things. i know but that's what i'm saying yeah. they, they wouldn't leave you alone at this point i mean no they don't they don't but what are you gonna do you gotta keep going forward man hector wants to be uh ron jaworski by the way hector i had a uh when i was like 14, I had a authentic Ron Jaworski jersey. He was my favorite quarterback at the time. I don't Do know you know why. he worked? His wife works for General Cigars. Hmm. I didn't know that. Yes, she does. Really? Yes, sir. Huh. I'll be done. All right, I have another question. Oh, okay. Good. This All right, good. let me see. This is good. All right. 
if you were in trouble, yes. All right, if you're gonna get into a fight, okay, a fight. Uh, are you in trouble? I wouldn't say a fight. You're any in any kind of trouble. Any kind of trouble, and you had to ha- call somebody to help you. That's in the business. Who would you call? Oh, without question, I'd call you. There's no me. There's no doubt in my mind. I would call. <laughs> well, you. I mean, because there, you, you you you've got the ins on everything, brother. I mean, you know you know the mayor. You know every cop. You know. <laughs> You know, and, and I know you, guy. I know guy Fury. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I and I've seen. You know, I, we've had this discussion before. Is like, who would you not want a cage fight with? Like in in cigar biz, and I've always brought you up because I feel like you got like, you know, like that street smarts, that street toughness. So I would call you instantly. I said, I and I I have a feeling that you could get me out of any situation, literally any situation. And I probably can. I mean, I, you know how many people call me for toilet paper? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not lying either, you know? Now, Eric, you know? this is going to be tougher for you when I throw it back at you because who would you call? Like, uh, you got to call wow. somebody in the in the cigar industry. In the business? That, and you're in trouble. Or maybe you're going to get in a fight. Like, let's say let's say you're going to get in a fight. You're, you're in an alleyway, and you got a couple dudes that are, like, pushing you around a little bit, and you're like, hey, you know, I could take one of these guys, but three of them? I need a I need another guy. I need somebody in the business. Who who would I want to be with me right then? Some it's got to be somebody who's got balls. You know, somebody <laughs> who, who who who's like who's like me who ain't gonna back down. I mean, you know, I, I definitely my first choice would be my son. My son's I mean my son's just like me. But I mean, if I can't use my son, no, I'm, 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 I mean, you know, I, I'd probably call Hector. I really mm-hmm. would. You know. Cause I, 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 you know, I, he, you got to call somebody that's fearless. You he know, moves uh, like uh, a cat. Huh? He moves like a cat. Listen, Hector's a little chunky, but I, I <laughs> there's this dude. Listen, but there's this dude in Nicaragua that stole the purse, yeah. right? And he's running right in front of our factory. How Hector moved that fast is beyond me. But Hector grabbed him, took him to the ground, took the purse. Held them down wow. until, they cut, until they came and picked them up. That's so. an awesome story. God, I would I would pay anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah that's a good story. So how about so. I got a couple for you? Uh, just for you to think about. Uh, Dean Parsons. Yes, he would be a, a definite. Omar, he's in there, and Omar, he's in, he's in the running. Those two guys would be in there, but I'd still call you like instantly. Yeah. That'd be the thing I'd call. Yeah. No, I mean, look, I, I travel the whole country. I, I know a lot of people. Uh, um, you know, listen, you can even ask Hector, you can ask my son. We get, I get the governor of the state of Florida that comes to my warehouse. Not because of me, because we, I have the, you know, the, the, the mayor of my town is a, a real good friend of mine. You have uh, um, uh, Marco Rubio has been in my warehouse. Uh, mayor Giuliani has been in my warehouse. I've had FBI agents in my warehouse. I've had gangsters in my warehouse. <laughs> I mean, you know, there's so many people that have come by. Uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, you know, we, we we give everybody open arms. You know, I don't care what you do for a living. You know, if you smoke cigars, you're cool with me, you know. As long as you don't, you didn't kill anybody or did anything that, you know, it, it's fine. You're welcome, you know. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, that's what I that's why I picked you is because when I'm at your warehouse, I feel like I'm at the hub of literally everything. <laughs> Cops, bad guys, good guys. <laughs> I posted one time all those bottles of that Pappy Van Winkle, and I, I got a call. And I'm not even going to say from where, but I got a call. And uh, and the guy goes, hey, Eric. Yeah, I said, it's Guido. I said, who? <laughs> Guido. Yeah, we have a mutual friend down here in so and so place. I said, okay. Yeah, your friend. I, you know what I'm talking about? I said, yeah. He says he wants a bottle of that Pappy Van Dinkle or whatever it's called. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, what year, buddy? <laughs> you know, 10, 12, 15. Yeah, you know, what am I going to do? So I stopped posting those bottles. You know? Right. Yeah, you got to be you gotta be careful. Like, who people know that you have that stuff. Yeah, of course. That's when I learned my lesson. You it's know, like I, gold. I stopped posting. I stopped posting it, you know? All right, what else you got for me, Eric? Yeah, you got a bunch of good questions. All right, I got this. All right, you're in quarantine, mm. and you're in quarantine for three months, right? Oof. Ouch, okay. And you could have either or. What would it be for you, cigars or, or, or booze? 
Oh, without question, I would go with cigars. I can go without booze. I can, especially beer. Uh, I can go without beer. I can go without beer. I'm totally happy. Now, bourbon, that's a tougher one for me. I love my bourbon at night, but if I had to choose, I would definitely go cigars without question. Really? What about you? Oh, definitely cigars. Let's ask that to Juan Cancel, see what he says. Yeah, what about you, Jordan? I used to think beer and then uh and then and i was in between beer and bourbon but now it's clearly cigars i mean nothing else can take up two hours time not get hammered <laughs> eric so really what what cigar let's say you say you have this this box of cigars and it's right. it's just one one style one brand and type what is it is it which one do you pick Look, I'm not that guy. I, I smoke other people's product. Uh, I know, but you, you don't know, have a choice. I, I, you got to just pick one. I don't have one. an ego. If I had to pick one cigar in an island for the rest of my life or yeah. for whatever, it would be the Laurent. Mm, that's Absolutely. Because right uh, I, I, you can smoke that during the day, in the morning, and uh, afternoon. And, and, and listen, most of the cigars we blend, we blend to our, our palate, you know, um, something that we like. You know, I, I try not to make anything that, you know, some people pick cigars that, that you know, they want us to do. And, 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 you know, I'm not telling you all the cigars that we've done are, are phenomenal or are great, you know, because sometimes I make cigars or what, what people like, you know. Um, but it, absolutely, Laurent. I, I think that's a morning cigar, or afternoon cigar, or nighttime cigar. I mean, I'm smoking that right now. Um, but I was in an island, you know. I don't know when to ask you because if I ask you that same question, I'll put you in the spot. You lose some sponsorships and stuff. And you lose some friends. <laughs> but no, if you want I, me to ask you, I can uh, tell I, you. I would. Huh? I can tell you. I'm not afraid to tell you. And I don't even okay. think this comes as a surprise to anybody. Because if you follow me on the Dojo app, you probably know. I would pick the uh, Espinosa Habano. That's my yeah. That's yeah. my go-to yeah. stick all the time. I've my told, man, that's, that's why I love you. I've I told, think I love you. I've said this <laughs> a million times on the show. Like, if I am... If my sometimes you know Eric, like you're smoking a lot of cigars in a week, and like your palate is doesn't taste right, and you, even a good cigar, you take it, and it just doesn't taste right to you for some reason because you're kind of shot your palate or whatever. The Habano for me, it just sets everything back to normal. Like if I take an Espinosa Habano, that's like my, that's the one that like sets the bar for me, where I know like oh okay, that, you know this is this is back to normal. You, you, you know, it's funny you say that. Um... I was with uh, Guy Fury. Um, I met him. He's a good friend uh, with Matt Booth. Uh, What an incredible human being. We have so much alike. You know, um, the same way you guys see him in, uh, you know, diners, diving and drives or whatever, he's the exact same way. Um, And uh, and we were talking to probably do something together, but, I mean, it's kind of cooled cooled down a little bit because of this coronavirus. But, um, you know, I gave him that cigar, you know, and I told him, look, I, it, it's so – I enjoy cooking. I, I use great ingredients. When you use good ingredients, you have a better chance of your meal coming out better. Right. But I look deep into into cooking. I really do. You know, I did my research on tomatoes, you know, and I found out these uh, San Marzano tomatoes. Uh, they're grown in Italy. You know, they sell them in the States here in cans. You know, don't be scared of using them just because they come in a can. But those tomatoes are phenomenal. You know, when when you use good tobacco, you know, uh, Hector put – I forgot what Hector put. It's kind of funny. I, <laughs> you'd be surprised. I, I may fight as well as you drink. <laughs> I, I guess you're going back with four to one. But it. when you use good ingredients, you know um, – look, Terrence is listening. You know, we put a little bit of that Arganosa tobacco in there, you know, because I think they're some of the best tobaccos in the world. I really do, including Cuba, you know. Um, you know um, – and the guy that runs the factory, uh, Machito, you know, he, he ran Organosa for a long time. So I, I know what, what they grow out there, what, what's good and what's not. And, you know, and having that relationship, you know, we, we, we get some of that stuff. Um, but the, there's a special tobacco that we put in there that, you know, not too many people get their hands on. And for me, it's one of my favorites. And I also put in the Laurent, you know. Um, and I don't want to reveal that because uh, then there's a lot less for me. You know, um, <laughs> but uh, I I enjoy that cigar tremendously, and you know, cigar aficionado they got a deal. Um, you know, uh, they rated they it got the number eleven cigar of the year. Um, yeah. You know, but yeah, but who cares uh, about them? It was the number one cigar of the year. It was the number one. We got we got 
back to back to back with you guys, though. Know, people right? think that I own I'm, you guys, though. I know so people. Well. People think I'm a fanboy. Guess what? I am. I I am. I am. And a so fan. am I. <laughs> and so am I. I'm, I'm a big fan <laughs> of not just you guys, though. I'm a big fan of you and all your family because you're a genuine human being. You know, I I seen it firsthand. You know, I've seen it in Nicaragua. You know. Uh, I'm not going to mention the guy's name because, you know, uh, I don't want to embarrass the guy. But, you know, uh, we were having a good time. And, uh, and you know, and it, it brought back some memories, some of the stuff that we were doing. Um, you know, and, and the guy was crying and stuff. And you went and you gave the guy a hug and all that. You know, you were the first one. And and, and that showed to me. Because, look, yes, I'm very streetwise. There's always people sharper than you. I'm not the smartest guy in the room. I, I would never be and I would never claim to be. Uh, I don't know big words. I went to college for three months. Uh, I got tired of, of college. I got bored of college. Okay. Um, you know, a lot of people that go to college don't, don't do what they, they went to college for, you know, but, I, but I, I notice everything. One thing about me, I notice everything, you know, uh, I don't get drunk, uh, that obliterated that I, I don't know what's going on. I got to know what everything's happening in the room. That's why I give my back. I never give my back to the room. I'm always sitting with my back against a wall or something like that because I need to know what's going on. That's just my personality. That's just the way I am. But when you went and you hugged that guy, uh, you know what I'm talking about. And I don't want to mention his name or whatever, but, you know, you were the first guy there, you know, and, and that showed a lot to me. That showed a lot of character. You know, look, um, the girl April, uh, uh, April Perkins, you know, uh, I know these are small little things, you know, but we, we go to the zone of Palooza and we're in the park. Remember the botanical garden, uh, Eric? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're at the park and I give everybody a speech. Don't throw cups nowhere. Don't do this. Don't do that. You know, this is uh, donated to us. Make sure she's dancing. You know, she's doing the Tootsie Roll or whatever she was doing. And there was a cup on the floor and she danced all the way to the cup, threw the cup in the garbage can and came back and kept dancing. Little things like that right. is, is what gets to me you know what i mean and, and and just a little bit a little action like that it's what you know um it's, it tells me what type of person you know they are and, and i know you come from a you know look you have your kids around you i'm gonna explain this to everybody out there and i'm gonna teach everybody something i measure my friends you know how i measure my friends how they are as a parent if you cannot be a good parent you cannot be a good friend because if you don't love your kids, you don't love anybody. Mm. I'm sorry. I mean, it, it, how can you be a good friend to me, Eric, if you're not a good father? If you don't love your kids. That's a great stop point. And, stop and think about that. No, I, I'm with you, man. I, that's, I, I'm 100% devoted to my six kids. And, uh, yeah, so I, I appreciate that. That's Dave the bad. Ask Eric about Anne Frank. <laughs> yeah, so, so – um, I'll tell that story. Abe calls me uh, the other day and says, uh, um, you know, about this whole quarantine. He said, and he said uh, well, Anne Frank, you know, was in the closet for nine months. And I said, yeah, but Anne Frank wasn't married to my wife. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking. My wife's a great, great person. You know, I love her to death. You know, um, she's a phenomenal human being, you know, you know, but just be me being at home every day, all day, you know, it, it, it's, you know, I, I'm going crazy over here, man. I saw you her. Know? I saw her for the first time on the uh, virtual lounge chat. Here. Yeah. I try to keep everything separate. I try to, yeah. uh, you know, my, my, my personal life, you know, separated, you know, um, I don't want that this life for her, you know, um, you know, um, you know, I, I like to keep it separate. It, it's a man's world is over here, you know, but, um, um, I got another question. For okay, you. I'm ready. All right, I'm ready. Dead or alive? I need okay. three. Three. Okay, dead. I need three. Dead or alive? If you can see anybody in concert, who would that oh. be? Well, you know, one that always that really gets to me that I that bothers me that I didn't see was the Ramones. So I would definitely put the Ramones really? on that list. Rock, rock, rock. Oh roll, yeah, high school. I'm a big. I'm a big '80s punk rock guy, so I definitely Ramones would be probably number one show for me of all time. Uh, I mean, hey, the Beatles. I mean, a seeing a Beatles concert. I'm not. I'm not a Beatles fanatic or anything, but they're they're so iconic. They're so you know, it made such an impact on all of you know the, the, the rock history. I'd probably have to say the Beatles. 
And then uh, maybe Nirvana. I'd probably put Nirvana on. I'd want to see Nirvana. What about you, Eric? Really? Yeah. Me? Wow. I would say Bob Marley. Oh, that'd be a good one. one. Yeah, that'd be a great one. Old Blue Eyes, Frank Sinatra. Oh, God, yeah. That's another awesome one. And then the other one's a toss-up. I would love to see uh, Led Zeppelin with John Bonham or, or or even Queen. And I loved Queen even before all this uh, Bohemian Rhapsody movie and all that, you know. Um you know, I, I guess those are those are my three. What what concert did you actually attend that you would say was your most memorable? Genesis. Genesis. I think it was. Yeah, they put on a. You know, it wasn't the best concert I went to. Don't laugh at me. I'm gonna tell you the best concert I ever went to was uh was uh Jay Z and Kanye West. They put on a show that was out of this world. Hmm. They they really did. You know, I don't know if it was the seeds. Or we have connections with tickets down here. You know, every time Eric wants to go, Eric saw. Um, well, I forget, I don't even know the new guy that sings now. I I I'll, I'll think about it. Uh, you know, time because I, I don't know none of the music now. But um, um we have a guy. Malone. Post that's who exactly <laughs> what it is. Post Malone. How would you know that? Uh, it's just the only one that could be. I don't know. It is Post Malone. He went to back to back concert front row tickets on both. He said he could have touched the guy. Yeah, I, I mean, you know. I would um, not touch that guy. Does, not that I would. I don't even know what that guy looks like. close enough to tattoo no, his face. <laughs> yeah. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't name you one song of that guy. Uh, I have no idea what it is, you know. Um, but we have connections with that, with tickets and stuff like that. So, um, But Genesis was incredible. Uh, uh, you know, U2 was incredible. Um, you know, and, and Billy Joe. I saw mm. Billy Joe. um I didn't see him when I was John. I saw him. I tell you a funny story. Uh, we're in Vegas, and um, you know I gamble a little bit, so my my host l- let me have two tickets for uh, uh, Elton John at, at Caesar's Palace. Um, and I got there like three days before the trade show. And Nemesh is a good friend of mine. I don't know if you guys know Nemesh works for Rocky Patel, or whatever. He's actually Rocky's cousin. So we get there, and the guy gives me two tickets. You know. Who am I going to go to uh, Elton John's uh, concert with? I go, Nemesh, you want to go to this concert? He goes, dude, you and me to an Elton John concert? I say, yeah, bro, I don't care. <laughs> I mean, let's go. So N- Nemesh has sleep apnea, right? So we're in the third row watching. It's called the Red Piano. We're at Caesar's Palace. Uh, I think it's called the Coliseum, you know, where they play the concerts and stuff. Right, right. We're there. And so they invited the first three rows, okay, up on stage to be with Elton John. Wow. So everybody goes up stage except one person. Can you guys guess who that is? Nemish. Nemish. <laughs> He's asleep. <laughs> <laughs> He's snoring his ass off. <laughs> and then uh. Elton John singing Rocket Man and pointing at Nemish. Look at this guy. And Nemish is snoring. Dude. <laughs> That's awesome. That's a true story, yeah. But we had a blast, yeah. That was a great concert, too. Yeah. I, I think the one for me would have been, um, I saw The Clash at Red Rocks uh, way back in the day, and that was that was pretty that was pretty epic. Like that's Rock one, the Casbah. What's the Casbah? Uh, it's some sort of thing in the Middle East. I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know. Good question. I never, knew, I, ne- I never knew what that was. You don't need to know, man. Yeah, you know, I, Eric, I'm one of those guys. Honestly, <laughs> like people tell me, like they say, like I, I say, like I like this song, whatever it is, right? I, I like this song, right. and they say, "Oh, do you know what that song's about?" And I'm like, I have no idea what that ne- song's ne- about. Neither do I. I, I don't want to know. <laughs> I, I never know what the song's about. You know, it's just, it I sounds like, good. It sounds good. I mean, I don't know. It could be like about something horribly immoral. I have no idea what it's about. Listen, I always thought. Elton John's song was "Hold Me Closer," "Hold Me Closer," uh, Tony Danza. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I always thought that's what he meant. Then I, later on, you know, uh, I, I googled it. You know, before before you know all this uh, IT stuff, you know, that you can lyrics. I said it says "Hold Me Closer, Tiny Dancer," and I'm like, I always thought it was Tony Danza. You know. <laughs> Eric, do you, do you ever play any musical instruments at all? That's my biggest regret in life. Mm. One of my biggest regret in life is is not. I, I love music, and uh, you know, I ask this question all the time, and, and you know, and then I'll ask you. But uh, my two biggest regrets in life is uh, not having more kids and um, and not playing a, 
an instrument. What would you, you play? Know? Yeah, like uh, if you could play something, what would it be? Uh, uh, probably the drums, mm. drums or guitar. I mean, you know, um, you know, uh, I, I just love music. I, I I wish I could sing. Dude. If I could sing, I, I I'd be in a, you know, America's Got Talent or something like that. You know. Oh, you can I, you can sing, I, but no, I can't. I, yeah, I didn't I, say you can sing no, good. I mean, you can uh, sing. Yeah, hey, right, hey, yeah. I, I know the words to a lot of the songs, though. You know that I can. You know? <laughs> so, what's your biggest regret in life? My oh god, um, my biggest regret not having more kids. Also, no, no, I had plenty. <laughs> of, I had plenty of kids. I, I would say my biggest regret in life is I didn't. I, I didn't uh, take my education very seriously. I was the kind of kid in high school, Eric. You don't need it, bro. I, I'm just saying, no, I'd like to have paid attention. Like, you know, it would be nice now to to know some of that stuff. I'm the kind of guy that, like, just skated through. Like, literally, my grades get, were always just good enough. Get, get yourself a Hector, and you're no. fine. <laughs> I, I'm not saying that, I, that I'm, I feel stupid now. I'm just saying... I, like, that was the time of my life. Like, I could, you know, paying attention in school was the easiest thing in the world to do. But I was so distracted by everything else. You know, it would have been nice to uh, maybe sort of take it semi-seriously. I don't know. I guess that's everybody. Yeah, I mean, I did the same thing. I mean, you know, everybody, don't, you know, when you're young, you know, all you want to do is party and go out with the girls and whatever and have a good time and all that. But everybody did that. I mean, you know, I went to college to learn how to fix computers. You know, and and I graduated in '85, and you know, in my high school there was only one computer, so I was born like in the wrong era. You know, that's why I'm not a tech guy. But um, you know, uh, and then we had a seminar, and everybody came back. Uh, some of the people that uh, graduated, they came back, and uh, all I was concerned about, I asked everybody, "Hey, how much you making an hour? Hey, uh, you know, how much you get paid? How much you make in a year? How much you this and that?" And everybody was like, oh, "I'm making ten dollars an hour. I'm going back in '85." Uh, $12 an hour, $9 an hour. I, you know, I make 25 grand a year. I say, you know what? I'm done with this. You know, doesn't pay very well. You know, so I, I said, I, I, I'm done with this. So I, I, after three months, because I heard you say that today, that you went to college for three months. So did I, you know. Um, you know, I'm a, I'm a real sharp street guy, but, you know, I'm not a very well educated guy. But, uh, uh, you know. It is what it is. You know, I'm doing what I love, you know, other than being a professional baseball player. Because you know? <laughs> I, I tell everybody, if you love what you do for a living, you'll never work a day in your life. That's so true, you know? right? That is so you know, true. So, Who do you guys I, think so. would win in a race between Hector and Juan? Oh, Juan. Hector. Hector, absolutely. Juan, Hector Juan would, would go off course, and he'd be going the opposite direction. But he'd be he. It would be a lot more fun to watch Juan. Juan, 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 Juan will be see? late for the. Juan will be late for the race. <laughs> Who raced at IPCBR? Yeah, no. Uh, I think it was Nelson, Nelson. Nelson from La Jugada and uh, yeah, and Juan or, or and Hector. Bill, I, I, I don't think. remember. Was it Hector? I don't know. I would have loved yeah. to have seen that live. I don't know. You know. You know. You know, Eric. When you think back, it's funny. Like me and you have actually a lot of. Con- we're almost the same age. Yeah, and I sort of feel like I have more street smarts than school smarts too. Like when I, when I'm at a uh, a, a concert or something, like I'm scoping out every exit. You know, like sure. Yeah, all right. There's an exit that's pretty close to me right there. Boom! If there's a fire breaks out, boom! I can right out that door. I'm gonna be the, <laughs> be the first one out the door. Go 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 to a cockfight in Nicaragua with AJ. <laughs> there's only one one entrance and one exit. I'm there with Willie, and I and I feel so uncomfortable. You have no idea, dude. <laughs> I mean, uh, it was paranoia. I, I, I mean, um, dude, there was only one actually. You can ask Willie. I felt so uncomfortable because, you know, uh, if something breaks out, you know, you, you got one exit. And I, 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 I promise you that two people couldn't fit. Uh, like, everybody was coming in, and if you were going out, you, you had to, like, put your back up against the wall for the person to fit. It's a real small. It might be, I mean, four, four feet wide. Three, three to four feet wide, it was horrible, you know, and, and no different. I felt so uncomfortable being in there, so I, I just left early. I went outside, smoked a cigar, and waited until everything was over. I just couldn't be in there. Eric, did it did it really make you nervous when when Eric Jr. started getting, you know, old enough to go and do stuff? And, and you Are had you to kidding like, me? Yeah. When he got his driver's license, it was horrible. <laughs> I mean, you know, you know, I got divorced, you know, he was 10 years old, and, uh, um, 
you know, uh, you know, he, he has a wonderful mother that would keep me updated, uh, you know, with with everything that you know was going on. But you know, that gave me if it wasn't for her that gave me peace of mind. Mm-hmm. You know, I would have to call him all the time. Hey, you okay? Blah 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 blah. You know, uh, um, uh, you know. But when they get the driver's license, you know, I I taught him how to drive, and and you know, and I told him, you know, uh, you know, because I drove for UPS for a while. And they taught you a lot of stuff, you know, um, you know. Uh, and he's a good driver, you know, and, and most of the problems, not even you, it's somebody else. Right. I always told him, don't text you. But I was a cool dad, you know. I told him, look, if you go out and you get bombed and you drink, I don't got a problem with that. Where I do have a problem, you know, was before all this Uber and all this, call me. I will pick you up. I will not get mad at you. I promise you I will not get mad at you if if, if you get drunk, too drunk to drive. Just call me, you know. Um, but it's horrible being a parent nowadays. I know Abe's listening. He's got... You know, he, he's got uh, beautiful kids, you know, and, and they're going up fast, you know. I'm telling you, he's not going to sleep. When they get their license, he's not going to sleep. You know, it's <laughs> it, it, it's it's horrible, you know. Um, and, and 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 that's a process of being a parent, you know. Right. Yeah, we're, if, we're, if, we're teaching our last our last one now, Ava. She's 15. So now we're teaching her how to drive. So we're at the, we're at the tail end of this thing. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm with you 100%, man. I always tell my kids, head on a swivel, man. I'm not worried about the way you drive. I'm worried about the way <laughs> everybody else Everybody else drives. And, and, and that texting, listen, there should be a device that once you get in a car that you cannot text. I, I mean, look, look, I'm not a tech guy, but Apple should come up with this. Once you're in a car, you know, uh, um, you should not be able to text. You know, it, your iPhone should know that you're in a car. They do have a mode. You can turn that on. But what if what if you're not driving? Right, you turn it off. No, it don't matter. Nobody yeah, they, in there. Listen, you, you they should have, have one. Have it on. Right. Listen, what's so important that you can't? You know, look. If, if you want to talk to me, call me. Yeah. You know, people don't, I don't do that anymore, anymore, right? Like, like I, I, listen, I don't text and drive. I really don't. I don't do that. You know, if it's important, call me. You know, somebody texts me when I'm driving. What do I? I pick up the phone and I call. Them. I put it on Bluetooth and, 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 you know, and, and go ahead. But you know, how many lives will we lost because people are just texting right. and driving, you yeah. know, and, and, and there should be some that your car turns off if you, if you're texting, you know, mm. or, or whatever, a, a, a buzzer nice. comes off or something like that. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, I mean, you know, it doesn't turn off, but you know, it's a button goes off or something, you know, some goes off that it tells you, you know? So Eric, we've got Lazona Palooza in November. Yes, sir. I would assume that at this point there's no plans yet. Do you have contingency plans? Should this push Listen, into the, that territory? That, 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 that's that's our Super Bowl, you know. Um, um, so far it's on. You know, uh, again, um, I, I don't fall forward. Uh, you know, I fall forward. I don't fall backwards. You 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 understand? Um. And we're going to continue doing that. Look, there's people that are already taking their uh, vacation uh, time uh, for La Zona Palooza. I'm not going to cancel it. You know, look, if this thing goes on through November, I pray that it doesn't. You know what I'm saying? Um, we're going to have La Zona Palooza, uh, you know, one way or another. You know, the only way we're not going to have it if this, is, you know, if this goes on through November. But right now, it's on, brother. I've you been know? to I've been to uh, almost every single one. I think I've only missed one in my entire life. And that's one of the few events that I, I clear my schedule out for, and I'm there, and it's it's such a great time. Look, you know, Eric, I um I, I've said this before. Um, we have a huge following, you know, in social media. You know, we we treat everybody like family. You know, a lot of people want to come, and uh, uh, you know, but I tell everybody, you know, post. We reward the people that that take care of us. You know, sure, people right. that buy our cigars. Or, you know, um. I'm not that guy because, you know, there's people that, you know, for in a business sense, the, it, it makes no sense to invite the same people over and over. But why not? You know, these guys are the ones that take care of us. You know what I mean? And once you get invited, you know, there's not, you know, unless you do something stupid, you know, uh, um, you'll always be invited. You know, um, you know, we have rules there because I want everybody to enjoy themselves. Um, and, uh um, I don't want anybody to ruin it for anybody. You know what I mean? Uh, and 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 we make it a family atmosphere. My dad goes. You know, my mom shows up once in a while. You know, um, 
we, we try to make it a real family thing, you know. My sister shows people how to make coffee. Uh, you know, we, we do, you do your, your, your podcast from there. You know what I mean? Uh, Coop does his, you know, Abe does a KMA, you know, a lot of people do their stuff from out of there and, and it's a great time, you know? And, and I mean, you guys stopped this last year, but, uh, uh, you know, we used to go to the holiday Inn and smoke cigars in the, in the, in the parking lot, you it, know, it got, it just got too crazy. It got, it got nuts. You know, uh, where's everybody at in the parking lot? You know? <laughs> yeah. I remember a cop. I remember a cop showing up one time and and uh, trying to get you guys out of there. And then he saw you guys. Are you are you guys with Eric? He goes, Yeah, okay, you guys are good. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. You, you know, but uh, it, it, I mean, we, that's what we try to do. We try to have everybody, uh, uh, you know, have a good time, and 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 we reward the people that take care of us. You know. No, that's it's a, that's the whole point of it. It's like a it's a thank you to the folks that uh, you know share your product and enjoy your product and want to get together with you and have some you know three days of you know kind of more intimate interaction. That's that's the whole point of it. It's amazing. I just saw some of your your guys there, gals post. If you guys want to go to Lozano Palooza, just post the cigars. You know we have people that monitor that. You know. So, um, you know, tag uh, look, you gotta tag it, 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 it's hard to, you know, we do it at the warehouse because it's tough to find a venue, you know, and the whole world hates us, you know, with the cigars and all that, but we do it there, you know, and, um, and we make the best that we can. Uh, I mean, you know, we rent an AC cause there's no AC in, the, in, in there's AC in the front, but there's not AC in the warehouse. Well, uh, we rent a, uh, an AC and. What happens? You know, it gets cold, and then all of a sudden, you gotta. It gets too smoky, so we gotta open up the the doors, uh, and then the AC leaves. But we we make the best of it. Oh, we yeah. really do. No, it's a bl- In fact, this year, I know it rained on the final night when we're supposed to be at the the garden. So we ended up just in the warehouse on that final night. And Eric, yeah. I think that was the most fun final night of the. <laughs> It no, was cool. Dude. I'm serious. It was the most fun. It was just everybody was just like letting loose and having just a great time. Did, did, you, did you see the Elvis guy? Oh, yeah. yeah. He was hilarious. He was great. Let me tell you what happened there, um, you know, for all the viewers and all that. You know, I, I we, we do an event in, 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 a, in a store in Fort Pierce. You know, you know, Dak. Dak runs that. Yeah. Um, and um, and uh, Juan went with me to that event. And uh it was great. We get down and they got this roll people just high fiving us, you know, and it was great. That that shop, uh, uh, SMS, you know, uh, it's a shop I've been for Pierce, um, and um, we had a wonderful time. And then there's this guy got this young kid got some big sideburns, buys I don't know four or five boxes and all that, and we're talking and all this, and he's telling me he wants to go to Arizona Palooza, and I told him, hey, you know, let's go. So he shows up, you know, so. The last night, you know, um, I guess he was working, whatever. He made it for one night, which was the last day. Um, he comes with a plate of food, and I get the mic, and I tell him, uh, thank you. Thank you very much. You know, <laughs> that's what Elvis used to say. And he stops, and he looks at me, and the DJ's my cousin, and and he didn't need to say anything to me. He really didn't. So I said, here you go, buddy. I gave him the mic, you know? It was this thing that just... <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was I totally my, planned. No, yeah, no, I, I swear to God, it was not planned. I, it, it was not planned. I give him the mic, and and my cousin starts playing music, you know, Elvis songs, and um, and he has his computer, and he sings like four or five Elvis songs, and I and he was phenomenal. And I tell my cousin, "Hey, put another." He goes, "How many Elvis songs do you think I got?" <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, was, so he puts on La Bamba, La 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 Bamba, your Richie Valens song, and the kid knew the whole words. I mean, listen, we were there till like three in the morning, and I had this kid singing. You know, it was a great time, you know. Yeah, that was one of the more fun. I think that might have been the most fun night. That one particular night was like just amazing. Eric, uh, guys, want to know what you're smoking, what you're drinking? I was smoking a Laranja. I'm smoking a Fair Warning right now. It's a cigar we did for Brian Lewis over there in Caravan Cigar. And what I'm drinking, I'm drinking, a, I'm not a big fan of McAllen. I'd rather uh, drink uh, Glenn Levitt than McAllen. But I bought this bottle. Uh, it's called Lumina, uh, McAllen Lumina. It's a single malt. Uh, I got it in Nicaragua on the way back in the duty free. I never heard of it, but it, it's pretty good. It's not peaty. I don't like peaty stuff, you know, but right. it's, uh, if you guys, I don't know if you guys can see it, uh, but 
Yeah, there you go. I'm not even moving the bottle, and it, uh, <laughs> I, I kid you not, I can't get. It. <laughs> Is it there? Are we good? There we go. Yeah, oh, perfect. perfect. Right there. Boom. There we go. Right He's there. Broke, yeah. You know, but actually, it's pretty good. You know, I don't even remember what it cost me, but uh, um, it, it's damn good. It really is. All right, Eric. No. Well, hey, man, I gotta, I gotta say, man, thank you so much for taking the time on Friday night to come hang with us on Smoke Night Live. You Appreciate got like three it. minutes left or no? Yeah. All right. The funniest thing that's ever happened to you in, in, in the cigar business? The funniest thing. That'll be my last question. Okay. The funniest thing was when we were in Nicaragua at AJ's place. With me or no? With you. Okay. And Juan. And that one night that we got into the toasting thing. Yes, and with the uh, finger with the finger. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And every and and so like Tim Wong and Jack Heyer were there, and we'd already toasted like forty five things. Like to here's right, to right, right. Yeah, here's yeah, to yeah, AJ, here's to yeah. you know all that. And yeah. then um, so then Tim Wong looks looks at Jack and he says, you know, what's the over and under? I'll bet you you know like twenty bucks on the over and under on how many more cheers we're gonna do. And uh, and the and and Tim Wong says, I think sixty five. And Jack says, "Oh, we're gonna go over because like Tim Wong said, no, we won't because the 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 rum it's almost gone. We had like all that rum, we had tons of bottles of rum, and then we get to about like sixty four, and somebody comes in the door. I think it was one of the guys that worked for AJ. He had, like rode his bicycle to the liquor store and he came back with like five more bottles of rum. And Tim Wong was just like, ah, oh, crap, I'm done. And I think <laughs> I, I I think we went to like a hundred and twenty. I mean, it was like it was ridiculous. Like we cheers to like we're cheersing to cheers. You know, it was, it was that was the most hilarious night of all time. That was my favorite. That was that that was a good time. That was a good time. It really was. Another time, another time was down there at the same place, and like we were playing that game. Like whoever gets the the coin closest to the wall doesn't oh, have to you, jump you, in the pool. You, you, you remember that? Yeah. And then the, and Jamie Carter lost and he was he had to jump in the pool and you and somebody was like, I didn't I didn't know black guys could swim. And he's like, Shut up <laughs> It was awesome. <laughs> no, that was a good time. I, I remember the guy from West Virginia. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, cause we didn't we, we were doing poker chips and uh um the guy throws the, the, the poker chip into the wall and it's the chip stood up and it rolled all the way back to yeah. past where he threw it from, <laughs> all the way to the other wall. That was hilarious. <laughs> I mean, he had no shot. Yeah. All right, Eric. What was your what was your funniest moment in in your cigar life? I mean, I, I mean, funniest. I've had so many great times, man. You, you know. Um, what about that story? You, I don't know if you can tell. There's a story with you and Santana in a hotel room. <laughs> kind of, uh, yeah, of course, I can say. You know, um, we're we're in uh, Orlando, and it was Bike Week. Uh, you know, I know everybody there uh, out there lives in different places, but when it's Bike Week in Daytona, you can't get hotels. Everything is packed. You know, uh, all the way from Daytona, Orlando. You know, it, it, it's packed. So we're we're playing cards. It's like midnight, and I. Uh, and um, I tell Santana, listen, bro, you, again, I'm not a tech guy. You know, I'm not one of these guys that, you know, um, you know, get get hotel rooms from on the Internet and all that. You know, I, I started that doing that now but before. So, so um, I go, Santana, we got to get a room. It's midnight. We don't have a hotel. You know, and he goes, oh, don't worry about it. I got it. OK. You know, he doesn't speak English very well. So he tells me. Uh, so we leave the, the, the place. So we, the first hotel I get there and, uh, first hotel I see, I go, dude, you are so lucky. I just had a cancellation and there's a cruise ship that just broke down and we got to get the emergency rooms up and all that. So, um, I got this one uh, queen size bed, a king size bed, you know, um, I said, okay, just give me one second. I go downstairs and Tana stay in the car and I tell him, listen, there's a king size bed. There's he goes, no, 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 I don't sleep with another man. No way. <laughs> and I said, dude, the, yeah, I, you know, I'm not gay. I, you know, uh, you know, he goes, he goes, no, I've never slept with another man in the same bed. I'm, and I'm not going to start today. I said, Santana, it's bike week. We're not going to be able to get any, you know, uh, we're not going to be able to get any hold other hotel. He goes, no, no, no. I said, all right. So we start driving, you know, um, there's no rooms, uh, on the, on the phone, you know, uh, I, I keep going. About my eighth hotel, I bring down a box of cigars. 
I tell the kid in the counter, I said, look, this is for you. It's not to pay for the room. This is for you. I need one of your emergency rooms, something. It's already now like 2 o'clock in the morning. And I told him, look, I've been driving for two hours. I need a hotel room. I need a bed. And the guy goes, look, let me see what I can do for you. So he goes, he goes, look, I got this king side bed. I said, I'll take it. So I go downstairs again. He stayed in the car. I get my bag. I tell him, bro, we got it. Two beds. Everything is great. So we, we, we get in the room. And he calls me Machete for whatever reason. So Santana gets in the room with me. And he goes, Machete, where's the other bed? I said, Santana, I don't know if you're going to stay here or not. I could care less. I'm going to sleep. So, all right, I go. I, I, I'm not that guy that got can go to bed without taking a shower. You know, I got to take a shower. So. I said, you do whatever the hell you want. So I go, I take a shower, I get my underwears and whatever, and brush my teeth, do everything I got to do. I come out, I guess my wife washed these underwears, these boxers with uh, Clorox, I don't know what. They went from red to pink, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so I walk out of the room, no shirt on, I got these pink boxers on, and he's looking at me, he tells me, you know, what the F is that, you know? <laughs> I'm like, dude. You know, so now he's fully dressed and, and he built a fortress between the bed. OK, he put a chair. I kid you not. He put the chair. Uh, he put his briefcase. Uh, he put the bedspread between us. He put a bunch of stuff between us. OK, I couldn't even see the guy. So I put ESPN on and I tell him, look, man, you know, I don't know what's your phobia here or whatever. So then I tell him, look. I said, look, I got to ask a favor from you. He goes, what's that? He goes, you know, you and I are here alone, right? And I, and I tell him, he goes, yeah. He goes, don't you start. I said, look, maybe if you help me out a little bit, you know, <laughs> put me to bed. I won't tell a soul, you know. <laughs> I don't want to say what I told him. And he goes, you mother F. He leaves the room. He gets the car keys and he slept in the, in, in the car. <laughs> I had the bed to myself, you know? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I cleaned up the story a little bit, but, uh, that, that, know, but, but that, that, that was a great story. You know? Yeah, I can only imagine what how that went down. And Santana, he's a funny dude, man. Love that guy. Um, Phenomenal human being. Yeah, he is. All right, Eric, that's it. That's the show, man. Thank you so much. It was great, man. It's always a great time, man. Yeah, appreciate you uh, bouncing on here. I know we're going to be uh, hanging out in the virtual lounge this week. Uh <laughs> As much as we can, because we're in quarantine. So I hope all you guys join us in the virtual lounge. You can get that link on the Dojo app in the menu. And um, and Wednesday, Jordan, we'll have a uh, Flavor Odyssey with we're Robbie live and Randy. Again? Yeah, we're going live we're again. Live. I don't know what the uh, – what is it? A Z? It's y. it's y. Y. All right. The letter is Listen, y. Before, before I go, yeah, uh, yeah. I want to – you know, I, I want to wish everybody out there safety. You know, I want everybody. You know, God bless each and every one of us. We, you know, we're gonna get this together. You know, it's been great what everybody has uh, done. You know, in the cigar industry. You know, keeping in contact and all that. You know, it, it's it's been it, it really has. You know, through what you guys are doing, everybody's doing. You know, um, everybody stay safe out there. You know, um, we'll get through this. You know, if there's any good thing that's come out of this, I think the FDA has left us alone a little bit. You know. Hopefully, uh, you know, they're going to delay all this stuff, you know, and, but we'll get through all this. We really will. All right. I couldn't have said it any better than that, ladies and gentlemen. So until next week, remember, never smoke alone. We'll see you guys next alone. Friday night. All right. Thanks, Eric. of having your own in-house cigar lounge? Well, JR Cigars is here to help. By entering our Ultimate Cigar Lounge sweepstakes, you can win $5,000 towards your dream in-house cigar lounge. Cutters, lighters, ashtrays, chairs, whatever you can think of. Simply go to our website and click sweepstakes right up top, or go to sweepstakes.jrcigars.com. You can only enter once a day, but up until May 31st, you can enter every single day. More times you enter, more chances you have to win.